Good morning. Why don't we all stand? Why don't you turn to someone around you, tell them it's good to see them here this morning. Thank you. 
such a world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and treasures and faith Are never enough And you came along And put me back Is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I know.
Amen. God's good, isn't he? You know, here's what I just want to remind all of us about. If you're not having the best of days, I could take you to Texas Children's Hospital. And I promise you, you'd feel a lot better about your situation. So here's what I want all of us to do right now. I want all of us to give God praise for where we are. That we was able to walk in this building this morning. We're able to lift our hands. We're able to lift up our voice. Come on, somebody. Come on, TPC. Let's give God some praise in this house. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise. I worship you, Lord. I'm thankful that I can have legs to walk and a voice to speak and hands to raise and eyes to see and ears to hear. Thank you for your goodness, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Man, I tell you, I feel like I could preach right here. Because you know what us Americans do? We get to looking at what everybody else has, and then we have a little self-pity on ourselves. You know what? We are blessed. So blessed. We're blessed. Whoever is here this morning and you feel like you got the least, you've got... You've got more than most of the world because you live in a great nation and you got a great God and you probably at least got a couple of pennies to rub together. Come on, somebody, get your mind off of yourself. Get your mind on the risen Savior. Look at the long game. My sins are forgiven. I, I got a purpose for living. I got a home in heaven. Hallelujah, Jesus went to the cross to save me. Thank you, Lord. Don't come to God saying, you know, that you deserve anything because you don't. Now, as a son, yes, because he wants to bless you. But when you and I came to him, we had nothing to offer him. We could do nothing for the Lord. He found us. He saved us. He redeemed us. He placed his righteousness upon us. So I come to him and I say, God, I know that I'm not worthy. I know that I'm not worthy. But God, I thank you that through your shed blood, you've made me worthy. And so I come not as a servant, come not as a slave, but I come as a son. Amen. Why don't you just take a minute, turn around and just greet somebody. Would you just give them a fist bump or a high five and let them know you're glad to see them this morning? I have a lot of people tell me, Pastor, are we going to go back to that three-minute meet and greet? Because there's people around me I don't even know. Well, we just may do that, but if you don't know somebody, you know, I was really, I was really thankful the other day after I preached the message about living with an open hand. I had someone text me and they said, Pastor, I think I got it. If I want friends, I got to show myself friendly. I was like, you got it. Whatever you want, give it away. I know you're standing, but I just, I got to preach to you. Rooster's got to crow and a preacher's got to preach. When you walk in the building, young people, if you can, if you can get this, when you walk in the building, don't think, what can I get? Think, what can I give? Don't walk into the building saying, my hand is open. Somebody give me something. Walk into the building saying, my hand is open. What can I give? Because whatever you give is going to come back to you. If you want more love, you say, man, I'm just, I miss church and nobody texts me when I miss. Well, why don't you text somebody when you see they've missed? Man, I miss church and nobody gives me a card. Why don't you give somebody a card when they miss church? Man, nobody gives me an encouraging word. Why don't you give somebody an encouraging word? 
Look at your neighbor and tell them this, whatever you want, tell them this, whatever you want, give it away. Whatever you want, give it away. Whatever you want, give it away. Father, we just thank you for this day. Lord, we know a lot's going on around TPC in the past couple of weeks. People that have passed away, losses that have happened, sickness. But through it all, you are faithful. And Father, we just thank you for your presence because we know that your presence makes all the difference in our lives. And Lord, I just pray today that someone that maybe has walked into this room discouraged would walk out of it encouraged. Someone who is maybe, Lord, walked in today not feeling well would walk out feeling so much better. God, do what only you can do. We need, we need more than just good church. We need life transformation. <laughs> Father, we are we're not dependent upon our flesh because within us there, there just dwells no good thing. But thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that is able to save deliver and heal and set free and encourage we thank you for the risen savior today and we thank you for your presence in jesus mighty name and everybody say amen thank you you can be seated if you're a first time guest today we are honored honored to have you thank you for being in god's house and if you look right there in front of your pew you'll see a little guest card and a pen if you'll fill that out for us and just drop it in the offering bag, we would appreciate that. We're not going to continue to call you or hound you or send you a bunch of emails. We're just going to say thank you for being our guest. We do appreciate it. And you can also keep that pen just as a token of our appreciation. Also, you can text the word guest to the number. I think it's on the screen, 337 337- 227-9609 and fill out our digital connection card as well. And if you do that, we've got just a little $5 gift to Dairy Queen so you can go by there and get a good blizzard and, and uh, just let you know we appreciate you being here. Well, it's hard to believe, but Thanksgiving is right around the corner and I feel like I just put up our Christmas tree about six weeks ago and here it is Thanksgiving, and I'm about to bring the tree back out and decorate it. But our Thanksgiving service, for anyone that is new, wants you to know what's going on. We have a Tuesday night service for Thanksgiving at 7, where we come and we give thanks, and then we take communion. And it is a beautiful service, and I hope that you will participate. That is November the 22nd. Also, our Grow Track is available online if any of you have not gone through grow track that's we ask you as your pastor and as a staff to go through grow track you say what is that it's four modules of know god find freedom discover your purpose and make a difference because we want you to take all the gifts talents and abilities that god placed in you at birth and use them for the glory of god and the kingdom of god so that's the shallow end of the pool but that's where we ask you to start and you can do that online. So we have some prayer requests. Remember Sister Template lost her husband of 50, close to 53 years. And uh, just ask you to lift that family up. Also that is Taylor, that is his grandfather. So lift them up. Remember to lift up Dave Robinson and his family. His sister, she lost her husband of many years. And so lift them up. Brother Jonathan Areno, people are asking me to... Uh, give him an update. He is still in the hospital uh, about the same. And we just need the Lord to touch him and to touch and strengthen that family. I don't know if uh, these names are up there, but Sister Spikes uh, continue to lift her up and then Sutton Foster lift her up. Also, April, April and Glenn, April lost a sister-in-law. And so I think maybe that service is going to be tomorrow. I'm not sure. That's what I've heard. But if you'll remember April and Glenn, I know that they would appreciate it. Our ushers are coming now, and we're going to wait upon you, your weekly tithe and offerings. We thank you. I want to encourage you today. I want you to know that this church is more than just a local church. We not only want to affect this 
this community, but we want to affect this region, but we also make a difference globally. Last year, we gave over $100,000 in a building program to missions, and that is because of you and your generosity. I want you to give yourself a big hand. Thank you. I mean that sincerely. So, so just because we're from a small community doesn't mean that we have to think small. Well, I appreciate the three amens that I got. Yeah. So I'm going to run that by you again. Just because we are in a small community doesn't mean that we have to think small. Thank you. Because we can change the world globally. You say, how can I do that? By your giving. Because we support many, many missionaries that are preaching the gospel around the world because of your unselfishness. And I thank you for that. One last thing, I'm very honored to have a dear friend of mine, close friend of mine, Brother Morton Bustard. And would you give Brother Bustard a big hand? I'm honored to have you here today, sir. Thank you. And he's going to come up after the offering, and he's no stranger to this church, and we're going to receive the word of the Lord. One last thing I want to tell you. God spoke to me on a Tuesday a week or so ago. I was in my living room. as I walk. I walk and pray. The Lord spoke to me and he said, I'm going to do a work of restoration. A restoration of prodigal sons and daughters, of health, of finances, and in this region, a work of restoration. I came and I told the ladies, they were here that day for ladies' prayer. I told them what the Lord had told me. And we had a confirmation in that prayer meeting that day. The Holy Spirit came into this room and I said, well, I may be preaching on it Sunday, but I didn't. But I, I did begin to look at Ezekiel 37, which is the scripture on the Valley of Dry Bones. <clears throat> then Wednesday night of this week, I just was praying. And I said, Lord, please bring a word. I just put a word in Brother Welch's heart that's going to confirm what I know you spoke to me. And when he opened up his Bible to Ezekiel chapter 37, I began to cry. And I literally cried through that entire message. Because I knew God was speaking to me. Wayne, this is a word, son, of confirmation to you. I am going to do it. When I look many times, my eyes tell me one thing. But I have to look beyond what I see. And I have to go to what the Spirit is speaking into my heart. And I just want to tell somebody right now what your eyes see. Don't get, don't, don't allow your emotions to run away with you based off of what your eyes see. You stay steadfast to what you know in your heart and the word that God has spoke to your spirit. I know I'm not the preacher today, but I just want to encourage you. If God has told you that your child is going to be saved, they may literally be in a bad way this morning. But listen, go beyond what you see. And remember what God has spoken to your spirit. And you anchor to that. You anchor to that. Sister Templet told me, she said, Pastor, God told me he was going to save my husband. And I said, you know what? God's not a liar. So you don't worry about anything else. You just anchor yourself to that word. And know that God is a just God and he doesn't lie. Amen. Because we don't know the hearts of men and women. Put no confidence, ladies and gentlemen, in your flesh because it's rotten to the core. You put your confidence in God because he alone is the one that can save you. Would you give God some praise in this house right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you again, Lord. We just come to you for all of these needs. You know what... Lord, this region has need of. You see those who are not feeling well in their body, those who are not feeling well in their spirit, those who are looking more at what their eyes can see than they are anchored to what they know in their heart. I pray, God, for all of these needs today. Continue, Lord, to strengthen your people in this region. God, and I pray that you would bless, Lord, the gift and the giver and use it so that, Lord, we can... Through, God, our finances help, Lord, spread the gospel around the world. And everybody say amen. God bless you for your giving. Thank you.
Praise the Lord, everybody. There's none like him. He doesn't play favorites. But that doesn't mean he can't put his favor on you. I'm the youngest of 19 children. No twins or adoptions. My father passed away when I was seven. My mother had to do double duty. The amazing thing about it, all of us siblings, we all felt a special love from mother. You may have thought you were her favorite. There were 18 more who felt the same thing. That's like your heavenly father. You know, he loves you like no one ever could. And he loves you like no one ever would. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 through verse 17. Isaiah 14, verse 12 through verse 17. What a privilege it is to be back in De Quincey. You're making a lot of progress. That's, that's quite a building. And uh, the Lord has let me have connections that... God can use as a blessing, and I was able to hook your wonderful pastor up with someone who is a professional at getting claims taken care of and everything, so I promised your pastor whenever necessary I would give this gentleman a nudge. So last night, while Pastor and I were having a meal in Lake Charles, I gave this guy a nudge with a text, and got a, I got a response. So Monday or Tuesday, we should get an update, so things are moving on. Why don't you release your faith and believe God that a substantial sum of money will be released and infused into your church money and help us get this thing up, finished, and paid off in record time. I love Wayne and Janet Neelam. I love Trey and Molly. 
They're, they're just amazing people. Never trade an old for an in for a new one. You don't know what you're getting with that new one. But I know what I'm getting with Wayne and Janet Neelam. My beautiful wife sends her greetings. Uh, we did a tour just here a while ago. She was with me. Oh, my goodness. She was with me in um, Mississippi, the state of Maine, Illinois, and then she was with me last weekend back in Louisiana. So she's taking a break. She deserves a break. But she loves you, and uh, she wishes she were here. Let's have a good time. Isaiah 14, verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? If I can just pause there. From my checking and research, this is the only place in Old and New Testament where Lucifer is named. So I've said it enough. I'm not planning on saying it anymore unless I just end to do it inadvertently. So when I refer to him, I'm going to point down. But when I refer to him, I'm going to point up. Amen. Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also among the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. I, 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 I. I is in the middle of sin, pride, and Lucifer. Verse 15, say, yet. 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 Thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. When you finally see him, you won't go, wow, you'll go. And consider, you will consider this, this wimp. And say, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake nations, that shake kingdoms? that made the whole world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of the prisoners. He didn't do anything good because it was all about him. Would you say my title with me? Overreach. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, faith is loosed in this building. The fivefold ministry and the nine gifts of the Spirit are activated in this house. We will flow seamlessly together there will be no isms or schisms or divisions. We will come into one heart now that we're in one place and we'll have one mind. And God, man, I feel the Holy Ghost. It's in the prayer right now. And God will accomplish great things here today. A word will go forth that will produce an amazing harvest that will be generational, saith the Lord. Would you give him a hand clap in the house? You may be seated. So March of 2020, something happened. Something probably came out of a lab. And we were told, just give us 15 days, flatten this curve. So if you don't mind just working with us, you're going to be inconvenienced, but it's only going to be two weeks. I think we're in day 14. Thank goodness, one more day. I'm not being cavalier because I've lost friends and you have lost friends and family members who either died as a result of having the virus or from the virus. And we're not being insensitive. We just understand one thing, that the government, the governments of the world took advantage of a terrible situation to make sure that their agenda will be successful. And that lasted all through 2021, and now we just found out in 2022 that there are certain CDC recommendations. I like the word recommendations. Come on, they're regulations. Will remain intact until at least April of 2023. They are messing with us with this. And then on top of that, we uh, thought we were going to get a breather. And then early this year, someone said, I want more and I'm not going to settle just for Crimea. I'm going to go into the Ukraine. And no matter what you think about Ukraine being 
uh, a bona fide government or not. That's not the point. The fact of the matter is there are a lot of innocent Ukrainian people who should not have to go through the living hell they're going through. And of course, that has caused a spike, among other things, with crude, you know, with gasoline for your cars and diesel. And I don't know exactly what the state of the diesel is, but I do know a few days ago it was about a 24-day supply. And then my wife, we're very frugal people, she came in the other day carrying a couple bags, and I think she said, $90 just spent at Kroger. Well, I can tell you what right now, they were not $90 worth of prime filet mignon. It was the staples. And inflation is no longer at 1.7. It's getting way up there, and hopefully this thing will come to some type of a halt. And it just seems like there is a power that is running amok unchecked. It just feels like darkness is inevitable. And it's very convenient right now to preach on the end time. And I'm going to give you my opinion. We're in the end time. And it's quite a thing that we almost are talking casually about a possible thermonuclear conflict without even considering the ramifications that could come from it. And in the midst of all this here, we look back and we see the WEF and a dude named Klaus Schwab, who is the one who said, you'll own nothing, but you'll be happy. But I got news for you. The uber wealthy will own everything because nothing is going to change for them. Many years ago, I will not name the nation, but 33 years ago, I was ministering overseas a long way from Louisiana. Many, many, many hour flight. Tens, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of miles. And the missionary there said, Brother Bush, I want to tell you what a third world country is because you're in a third world country. You have the very poor and the uber wealthy, but you don't have any middle. They've been absorbed. They're gone. This is what they plan to do. Now, I'm a very hard-headed person, but at least I have scripture because the Old Testament refers to his prophets having hard heads. My head is so hard, it withstood being run over by a 1959 Pontiac when my father accidentally backed over me in our yard in Canada when I was a year and six months old. Man, what a time to have that backup camera and those little alarms going off. But then again, I wouldn't have had the testimony. But I'm hard-headed. And I'm still of the opinion it's a government of the people, by the people, for the people. I just think that they work for us. And I don't want anyone who is a multi-billionaire who thinks he's God. See, don't you understand what they believe? They believe that their conscience will live, their, their consciousness will be eternal. You don't understand that maybe, but that's what they think. They think that they have found the way to everlasting life. That's why you hear talk about transhumanism and everything and chips and everything. Folks, we might as well get to the point, stop bearing a head in the sand because they're talking this talk and they're sneaking it up on us. But here's the bottom line. I have, no, to the best of my knowledge, never carried a doggy bag out of a nice steakhouse. I can put it away. I like steaks so much, I'll tell you that, Mar Mar Marilyn will tell you, we'll be driving through some country roads and see some good old black Angus out there grazing and I'll just say, hey, let's have dinner one day. But I don't want a filet mignon that comes from a microrobe that is made in a 3D printer. I don't want almost meat. I want meat. And if I decide to own an EV electric vehicle, that ought to be my choice and you ought not force me into it. And I still believe in bodily autonomy. You should not be forced to take into anything into your body that you choose not to. If you choose to, I respect that. But if you choose not to, I respect that. We're losing our Bill of Rights. So where is it all going to stop? Well, ladies and gentlemen, some people call him a genius. I don't believe he is. Because in our text, 
He was there. And when he was there, he was exposed to the pure, unfiltered, raw, undiluted glory of God. You and I have never had that happen. You can take every wonderful experience you've ever had in the Holy Ghost, get the aggregate number, multiply it by a thousand or anything else, and you'll still never come close to what's going to happen to you when you cross the chasm from the temporal to the eternal. I'm, I'm going to preach here today. I'm, I'm going to preach, and I'm going to preach until you get that seatbelt off. I'm just having fun. Come on now. That was not a cervix. I'm just having fun with you. We're, we're, we're getting chemistry going in here. But then again, it wouldn't hurt because I'm going to throw it down. In spite of the offering, whatever it's going to be, I'm going to throw it down. I'm going to preach faith to you. Ladies and gentlemen, no wonder the Bible said precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Because we think death is defeat. No, no, no. It's promotion. I want to live, and I love my family. I love those two grandsons. But what is waiting for you over there beats anything you've ever... <laughs> One day in his course is better than a thousand. I've been to Ma Ma Maui a few times. I've been down on, uh, I've been on Kanapali. I've been down uh, on, on, on Walea. I, I, I've been around the world more than once, not on every, on every continent, but I've been around the world. I've, I've seen the changing of the guard. I've seen the fjords of Norway. I've seen some really cool stuff. But you can save a thousand trips by just getting in his presence because when you walk into the glory of God, no wonder you're going to cast your crown at his feet. But he was there. And when he was there, he got this stupid thought in his mind, I can go higher. I'm going to go up to the sides of the north. I'm going to go above the clouds. I'm going to elevate my throne. I am going to be like the most high, ladies and gentlemen. I am in my 41st year of traveling this world, preaching the gospel and witnessing signs, wonders, and miracles. But I have never approached the place anywhere near where I think I can do this without him. As a matter of fact, I prayed in the hotel last night. I prayed in there this morning. I thank God for the privilege of just being here. But I need him right now. I I'm not a professional. I am not a public speaker. I am a preacher and a prophet of the Most High God, and I desperately need him here right now. But he said, I can do this. So don't tell me he's brilliant. And God looked at him and said, Get out of my heaven. And he cast him and the third of the angels that followed him, he cast him out. And since that eviction, he has never experienced one ascent, not even an inch. His direction is down, 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 down. He might try to make you think that he's increasing. I know that hell has enlarged her borders. I understand that. But that's just because of decisions people are making. But as far as his authority and his domain, he has not gained an inch. He just keeps going down, 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 and down. But he's angry at you. Because he never got a mulligan. He never got one do-over. It was over because God said, you started from there. There's no place else to go. You cannot go up because I set up and take down. Promotion doesn't come from the left or the right. But he said, I'm going to give fallen humanity access to my presence. You will be bound in chains of darkness and you'll never see one ray of the glorious light. But there will be people that come from the darkest, deepest hell, from drug addiction, from alcoholism, from perversion, from abuse and misuse, from poverty, from all type of adversity. And I'm going to open the door for them to come up, 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 up. And that's the reason why he's mad at you you are occupying in the spirit 
where he used to be. And that's why he hates praise. Because he probably was over the praise part of heaven. And now he has the redeemed of the Lord saying so. And on a Sunday morning, when we come from all of the different backgrounds and the adversity we all have to battle, and we walk into a gymnatorium, and you push all of that aside, even though you've had a tragedy in your home, you push it aside. Even though things are not going good for you, you push it aside. And you raise the high praise right here, even though you're not in the new building yet. Ladies and gentlemen, we can praise him in here as good as your praise is not going to get any better in a multi-million dollar sanctuary. Your praise. I'm going to preach. You might have only been in this for one month, but your praise is a sweet smelling. It doesn't matter how putrid your past was. Your praise is a sweet smelling savor to God Almighty. And he was cast out. Because he overreached. And then in the garden, utopia. Don't get myopia in utopia. Don't put emphasis on the one tree you can't have instead of the 10,000 you can. And the serpent being more subtle than any of the other creations, except for man, the beast of the field and so forth, he, he approaches the woman. And he says almost exactly word for word what God said. God said, thou shalt die. And the serpent said, thou shalt not surely die. So he's having a conversation with the woman. But the man is standing right there. Maybe toxic masculinity was wiped out in the garden. Maybe the emasculation of the male species was drastically reduced in the garden because he stood there and did nothing. What kind of a man who has authority over everything that flies, walks, and swims who could have cast that serpent out of his garden, what kind of a man stood, would stand there and just not say a thing and then end, eventually give in? A whole lot of reason why we're at, where we're at is because we need men to be men. And they're trying to get to your children and your grandchildren and say they're 70 some genders. They don't want them believing in one man and one woman, you know, the two genders. They're trying to confuse your children. My point is this it's time for men to arise. God said, this is not how it's going to end. I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of the woman, and the serpent shall bruise his heel, but the seed shall bruise his head. And then a few thousand years later, an innocent man was crucified, buried and rose again in three days' time. And at that point, He got severely hurt because to bruise means to crush. It wasn't just the fracture. He had a major traumatic concussion. And bruise does not mean a change in the skin color right here. It meant Boom, take your foot and one, two, three, hit it down. One, two, three, boom. What? Come on, one, two, three, boom. That's what happened to him. And ladies and gentlemen, he never was the most brilliant. And he's certainly not now because he's not right in the head. Let me just tell you something. I am not a psychologist, but I understand one thing. All anger is rooted in fear. And we see a lot of anger, but it's it, the root of it is fear. He is scared to death. Because
because he knows his time is short. He knows he's going to a bottomless pit. He's going to be locked in a chain. He knows it. Ladies and gentlemen, he's trying to mess with your mind. He's trying to make you think that God isn't real, that God is limited, and he can do whatever he wants with your body, with your mind, with your finances, with your home, with your children. But ladies and gentlemen, he's a loser. And sin is not having a revival. It's fighting for survival. Bring up the sound. It is the last desperate throes of a losing, a losing entity that's trying to remain relevant. He is as a roaring lion, but he's got a lot of bark, but no bite because he was dethroned, disarmed, and detoured in hell. For this purpose, Jesus was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And we believe it probably was the beloved John who over in the latter part of your New Testament, John 1, 2, and 3, it was that John who wrote, My little children, I write unto you that you sin not. Now we don't condone sin around here. We don't gloss over sin. Sin can't enter heaven. But if you sin, we're not going to excommunicate you. We don't have a three strikes program and you're out around here. We believe in 70 times seven. We believe that he's rich in mercy, slow to anger. He's mighty in battle, but his mercy endureth forever. So if you mess up, we're not gonna evict you from the building. We're gonna say little children, don't sin. But if you do, it was that same John who used the same term, little children, just a couple of chapters over when he said, you are of God, little children. Greater is he who is in you than he that's in the world. Little children don't sin. Little children, you can talk about he that's in the world, or you can talk about he that is in you. Would you give him a hand clap? Get ready, musicians, because I'm about to wrap it up. I want to tell you, it looks a little desperate right now. It looks a little hopeless right now. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's a little bit different than what I would wish for. But it's not going to end the way you think. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not saying that my strategy is the correct strategy. But you can get up every morning if you want, when you want. And you can have three cups of coffee while you're watching or reading your, the news. But they're going to manipulate your mind. It's called mind control. Mass hypnosis almost. With a mass uh, a psychosis no, no, no. I'm not saying avoid the news. I'm saying I think five minutes is plenty, probably 15 at the most. Find out what's going on in the world so that you can intercede, so that you can pray, so that you can bind down here and God will bind it up there and loose down here and God will loose it up here. But don't give your mind to it. I get up early and I declare this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And then I continue. I say today is a gift from you to me, O Lord. Your mercies are renewed unto me this day. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto me. Merely and I place this day under your lordship. May we experience the potential and the possibilities of this beautiful day. And then I look to the east. I do it every day. And I say from the rising of the sun. And I look to the west and I say till the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Ladies and gentlemen, he always overreaches, but he will never overreach. He 
will never overreach because the hand of the Lord is not short that it cannot save. I don't know where your children are right now. I don't know where your grandchildren are right now, but I declare unto you before this thing wraps up in the Tenderloin District of the Bay Area of San Francisco, there will be a revival. Midtown Manhattan will have a revival. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Get ready for the greatest revival that you have ever even heard about. Would you stand with me all over the house? I do not know long how long my tenure will be. I do not long know just exactly how that God has scheduled this. But at least up until this moment, I am a prophet to this house. And I'm going to prophesy to you. You are not going to be overwhelmed with inflation. You are going to absorb inflation. It's not going to reduce you. Oh, goodness sakes alive. It's not going to ruin you. Because God Almighty, who traced four rivers, the Hittokel, Pison, Geist, and Euphrates, to flow through the utopia, the Garden of Eden, to irrigate. God is good. You see, your job or your company or your social security may not be enough to float the boat. But God will carve another river of revenue into your home. And you will experience the blessings because you're going to feast in the family. Famine, you're going to live in Goshen. So the study is suggesting that children who had to do online schooling for two years, some of them will suffer greatly with lack of comprehension. Some of them with linguistic ability will be way behind. Some of them will have a 10-year a 10 year deficit but not your children not your grandchildren we're going to prophesy over them because let me tell you the reason why he's attacking children he knows what time it is he knows that in the end time sons and daughters shall prophesy so he has to do everything he can to silence your children and grandchildren. We cannot program our children that prophesy, but we can provoke them to prophesy. But one thing your children and grandchildren better not let you let the, hear you say, what a terrible time it is to try to raise kids. Don't, don't talk defeatism to your children and your grandchildren. So I'll tell you what I do. Dathan and Kayla were raised. George and Jack, my grandsons, are five years old and two years old. My focus is on them. I am not trying to call them to the ministry. But I'm going to do for them what I wish someone would have done with me when I was five years of age. Because I had more layers of insecurity on me than an onion has skins. I believe that God could use any of my siblings, but not me. I was very insecure. And it wasn't when I was five, but brother, when I was about 13 or 14, my eldest sibling who passed away since, a man of God, looked at me and changed my life when he affirmed me. He said, Morton, the hand of God is resting upon you. So you know what I do? I did it before I came down here. Only an hour and 40 minute drive. But when I got that, when I went to get that rental car to come down here, I stopped in the George and Jack's house. And I said, George, come over and pray for me. He prayed for me. And then I got Jack, two years old. He came put his hand on me. They shall prophesy. <laughs> oh, they're too young. Well, let me just tell you something right now. The first week of June of this year in Dallas, Texas, five-year-old boys and girls were taken to a drag show where they saw adults dressed up in the most lewd, perverse outfits. 
in front of five-year-old kids. And we're intimidated. George, come pray for me. Any adult that would perform those acts in front of a children should go to prison. But I'm not done. Any parent that would take their son or daughter to it ought to have to serve twice the amount of years. A few months ago, I went to fly out. I think it was maybe to, I don't know if it was maybe in D.C., I forget. And I stopped and I said, George, come pray for Pops. He's about to get on the airplane. He came over and he put his hand on me. He said, oh, God, keep Pops out of danger and keep the airplane away from the power lines. I have a feeling that he's overreaching in someone's life here right now. See, he, some of you brand new people, you've really angered him. He's constantly telling you, you're not good enough. You're not going to make it. Well, if you're not good enough and you're not going to make it, why is he telling you that? So I have a strategy when I go to the gym. Yeah, I'm a grandfather, but I still hit the gym. And I see those young bucks. They're coming. They're on testosterone. They're on creatine. They're on amino acids. They're on protein, and some of them are, they're juicing. And they come in with those big old quads, and they've got that, you know, big shoulder breadth and everything, and... So I have to deflect attention from me and my lack of success and I attack them. Because they're coming in here like this here. And I look at them seriously, I say, you were making progress. Did you take six months off? <laughs> and they swell up even more. I said, I understand taking a week off is good for the body, but wh wh why did you go and take about six months off? And they don't understand my strategy. That's what the enemy does. He's messing with you. He's trying to discourage us. But as I preached here last year, he changes tides. He can turn it around at the midnight hour. Right now. Whew. He might be doing something over on that footprint of that new building as I'm talking right now. And I'm not the one who provoked him to do it. I just think he was doing it and he put the thought in my mind because prophecy is not creative. It's speaking what's already in the mind of God. And I think I'm tapping into the mind of God. He's going to do a miracle for that building. this amazing team and get a chance here to lead us a little deeper in the worship. But if I'm going to begin the minister here. But if this is your word today, if this is a word that has just come home to you in any part of this message, why don't you leave where you're standing and make your way right down here? Well, here they come. Here, here they come. Here they come. You might as well come. You might as well get down here. Whatever you feel. You are one of the best worship teams in all of De Quincey. Were you the young man that used to be on that organ in the old building years ago? Man, you're like 12 years old then. How do I preach for so many years and look so young? Would you keep coming? Would you lift him up or whatever you feel and I'll just break him when it's my time?
Lift your hands. We might as well, we, we might as well start, amen. Amen. Mason, Mason. Now, that could be someone's name or it could be someone's career, job. Mason. Is, where, where's, where's Mason? Uh, you come to this church? How long have you been coming here? About 14 months now, straight. Four, well, it's been a year since I've been here. I never met you when I was here last year. And you wore blue jeans because I forgot my, my dress pants. I think someone may be thinking, boy, he should have wore blue jeans again today because he tore it up. Last. I'm just having fun. Mason. Mason pastor never told me that there was a Mason in here. Stand right there. So now the Lord is expanding on why he gave me the name through a word of knowledge, Mason. And I don't need to call it everyone's first name or last name in this house. But this is for the name Mason. But it may be for you. The Lord is saying, if you're struggling with spiritual identity... If you're struggling with the thought, I can't measure up. I'm the square peg, and I just don't fit into that round hole. God is saying, I knew you before you were born. God is saying, you're not a mistake, you're a miracle. God is saying, I numbered the hair on your head. And you, right there that just touched your head, you have blood pressure situations and you have breathing situations. Getting your second breath is not easy because you have a condition that is embedded down in your lungs. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are loose. Raise your hands, Mason. You're loosed right now in the name of Jesus. And I deliver all of you from the insecurities and the questioning and the doubt and the unbelief. In the name of Jesus. Holy God. Would you raise your hand up? Now, I'm a potted plant around here, and I think that we're probably more family than we are friends because I've been coming here for so long. I feel the Lord wants me to, there's no alarm going off, no alarm, no alerts. But I feel the Lord wants me to tell you something that his love is wrapped around your family and everything is all right. His love is, is in tears, it's in layers, it's in layers, it's wrapped around in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the God.
those of you that know me through the years, you know what's going through my spirit when I have these mannerisms. I know there's a Melville. I know, I don't think there's a Melton. I don't think there's a Melton or a Milton, Milton or a Melton, Milton or Melton. There may be a Milton. A placement, is there a Milton or Melton in this house? If it's a close, if it's a family connection or a friendship connection, and that name rings a bell when I just called it out, raise your hand up. I need to speak a word over it. Do it quickly. You're raising your hand. Yes, Who's it for? Oh, for a friend of mine. Your friend. Do you go to this church? Yes, sir. How long have you been coming? A few months. A few months? God's making something real to your new members. Melton or Milton, well, let's pray for him right now in Jesus' name. Raise your hands up. What's your first name? Lee. Lee? Yes, sir. Raise your hands up and say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. If you can do it for me. If you can do it for me. And my name is Lee. And my name is Lee. You can do it for my friend. So, Father Milton or Melton, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak a word over him in the name of Jesus Christ. Is Lee, is this friend, does he live close to this area? Uh, he lives in uh, Westlake. Westlake, well, that's close. Yes, sir. Is he in church today? No, he's not. He, he's going to come with you to church. I'll bring him. You'll bring him? I'll bring him. So you'll have him here. Lee, would you put your hands up? If it seems that there's a little bit of a pause in your life, it doesn't mean it's a shutdown. It means it's a chance to get your second wind and to regroup, because you're going to regroup. Because you learned. You had a front row seat. And you now know that that did me no good and I'm done with that and I've moved and everything has changed in Jesus' name. Amen. And it will never be the same. Amen. Praise God. Lee, would you put your hands up? The Lord wants me to tell you that a good portion of your teenage years, you lived in anger, but God has set you free, and now you're going to be known as the teddy bear. Because he put a heart of flesh where there was a heart of stone in the name of Jesus. Would you raise your hands up? I love that vest. You came dressed to the nines. Keep your hands up just for a second. Because in spite of the fact that you could use a healing throughout your bones and your joints, you praise God anyhow. And because you praise God, from your neck through your shoulders all the way down your spine and your hips, be loosed right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In G Everybody praise Him. Now, we got to the bones, but we're dealing with other things in our body right now. So if you have a knee or knees, condition in your knee or your knee, and, and of course you have the condition, and these cement floors don't make it any better at all, and you may have to sit down, but then again, you may be standing right now with discomfort and pain in your knees. Raise your hands up. You ready for Jesus to touch you? Yes, I am. I am. Step back. And step back. No, 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 step back. In 40 years, I've never prayed for anybody and had them step back in faith. But 
I'm telling you right now, Wayne Nealon, there's a flow of the Holy Ghost in this place today. God is telling me that he's reversing things. So here it goes. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus All through the knees, the tissue, the tendons, the ligaments, the bone. Jesus' name. He's touching you right now. He's touching you right now. Can I, can, would you stand there for a second? Can I get something else? Would you raise your hands up? Oh, I've heard of nerves being frayed. <clears throat> That's where it's pat and it's frayed. It's just you, you have, you have, Mm, it's just, it's, it's, it's frayed. Something, the stomach lining, there's something to do with the lining. The, it, it, and it's intimidating. It's intimidating because you don't know exactly when it's going to. You're loosed in the name of Jesus Christ the Master. heard something not from God. She said, I heard her say it. Stop the popping in my back, okay? There it goes. Now come here, Grammy. Did someone say last call? I believe you heard our prayer. Before I prayed, before I prayed for your knees, were they bothering you? Oh, yes, sir. But you believe God heard your, our prayer? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. How are they feeling now, Mom? They're feeling better. They are? <laughs> Isn't she lovely? Isn't she what? How are the knees feeling, Mom? It's feeling better. Any pain? Not right now, no. Don't let it come back. Did I miss anyone with the knees? You could. Well, you might as well play then. Might as well take some of it. Might as well get some of it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Might as well get some of it. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Could you raise your hands up? What's your first name? David. David, I probably heard that in the pastor's office, but David, you have, as the scripture said, you have cast your bread upon the water. Yes, sir. Tide's coming in. <laughs> Something's coming to shore. Been a little trying on you the last few months, but something is going to change because at the midnight hour, he's going to turn it around. all those knees did we get all the knees <laughs> David began to operate in the spirit he knows there's more knees around here He's, he saw what I saw it's not a lot but there's just a little bit of a deviation in the spine and we can have that spine made straight if you'll raise your hands up, he'll just he'll just he'll just take the pressure out of that spine. Raise him up. Now I heard her say it, so there it goes. In Jesus' name. Yep. In the name you point me there in just a second. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the power of the living God. Oh man, we just came into a hot spot. Come on. Come on. Come on. Step up with me. Step up with me. Something's happening to your spine. Something's happening to your spine. He's touching you right now. He 
he's touching you right now. It's real. Marinate in it for a moment. Marinate in it for a moment. You do. Yes. Before I came over and prayed for you, was your back in pain? Yes. But God heard our prayer. Do you believe that? I believe it. What a Sunday. What a Sunday. Raise your hands up. Be it. Let, 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 absorb it. Absorb it. Absorb it. Keep coming. Keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. How's that back feeling now? Better. Any pain? Better. A little bit, but it's a lot better. Well, you praise, you'll perfect. Let's just marinate in it a little bit longer. Let's just marinate in it a little bit longer. Matter of fact, it's passing by right here, right now, too, in the name of Jesus Christ. It's passing by. Christ. If you need a healing in your body, raise your hands up. And just keep them up for a second. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to see Colosseums where tens of thousands get healed just like this in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth. In Jesus' name. Would you raise your hands up, Pastor Wayne? God is talking to you. It's not imaginative. It's not of your own construct. God is getting your attention. Out of this... Out of this will come greatness. Out of this will something will happen on a God level. In the name of Jesus, move in him, Holy Ghost. Move in him, Holy Ghost. Rabaha. That which he has sought after for years and watched it in others. Let it be part of him in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. By the power of the living God. Ah, Father, this wonderful worship team that continues to give and give and give. Before they sing the next lyric, pour it back into them in the name of Jesus Christ. Pour it back into them in Jesus' name by the power of the God. In the name of Jesus, these wonderful members, Father, that come in week in and week out. Hallelujah. And in spite of fixed incomes and inflation and everything, they bring their best and they lift up the praise. I speak it over them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This young generation that is being raised up could, could possibly be the generation that welcomes the second return of Christ. This young generation will witness an amazing anointing. You see, here's the deal. With the exception of Moses and Elijah making about a 72-hour, 48-hour return in the end time, the Apostle Peter and the Apostle Paul are not coming back. And here's why. God doesn't have to bring them back because he's got you. And he's got you. And he's got you. Going to talk a little biology today. See, when your mom and dad met, 
consummated the union. When they consummated, they created. 300 million swimmers started down the channel. Out of 300 million, only 200 crossed the finish line. Out of the 200 that crossed the finish line, only one was successful, and that's you, and that's you, and that's you, and that's you. He could have let you be born in any, any, any era he wanted, but he put you here now. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. So your timidity is going to be overwhelmed by boldness. Your weakness is going to be overwhelmed by divine authority. In the name of Jesus. Everyone 35 years and younger, raise your hands. 35 years and younger, in the name of Jesus, I bless you. And I speak the power of God over you. I speak that, and for all of you, I speak that God will order your steps and direct your path. I pray that you will experience the perfect will of God. I pray that you will exhaust all the potential and the possibilities that God has put in your pathway in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name, can we give the Lord a big hand clap? Would you stand with me all over the house? It's 1131. I'm going to do something a little bit different. Normally when I come, as is always the case, I have always said if God says, you know, so 120, 30, if God says give 10, don't give 20, we're not going to talk no. I don't want to put a thought in your mind. If you're not intimidated to raise your hands, to close your eyes, and say this. Say, Jesus, you've blessed me beyond what I ever expected. And I'm not intimidated to ask you to challenge my faith, to speak to me, to sow a seed into this ministry, Because greater things are going to happen. Say, now, Lord, I wait upon you. Okay, just wait upon him. Father, you speak. You, you give the number. Pastor will receive the offer, but you speak. Just lead and guide. Now, you're getting nudged right now. There's that little bleep on your radar screen right now. See, that's God talking to you right now. Don't, don't dismiss it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it in Jesus' name. Okay, wait upon them. The Bible says, given it shall be given. Then it says, shall men give into your bosom. You know what that means? It doesn't mean your chest that meant you would have a huge bib. And men would just come and fill up that pocket, that bib. It didn't say your rich uncle. It just said men. Father, release. But the, we're not going to limit this to monetary God. Save our homes. Change lives. At the new year beginning, it will be a new season for your church. You are going to be amazed at the lack of effort for the efficiency you're going to receive. You and your beautiful bride and joy of yours are going to stand with tears flowing down your faces and you're going to say to God, be the glory because we didn't do this. And just as you have raised up amazing children, you will be surrogate parents in the spirit, you and Janet, and you will raise up an amazing generation. God is shifting here. He's not forgetting about the elders and elders. Don't you let the enemy tell you you're not valuable. We've got to have you. We absolutely need you. But we're going to raise this generation up. Now that you have got the number, you can get by check, cash. Check. He'll tell you all of that. That's, that's his department. Raise your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, I sow and you grow. My harvest will come in Jesus' name. May the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you in Jesus' name. Right before pastor comes, if you're in a position where you don't have money to get this, give in this offer, that doesn't mean God's going to rob you of a blessing. If you don't have money to put into the plate, raise your hands up and say this. Say, I give you water in Jesus' name. Matthew, the book of Matthew. 
I've received the offering. You're blessed with a prophet's reward. A man who walks with God with wisdom and anointing, he's going to receive the offering. He's your pastor. He's the one who is at the helm directly with an amazing team. Would you welcome your pastor back? God bless you, my brother. Amen. You receive the word of the Lord today. So there's something in my spirit before I let you go that I want you to do. Just tell me when you're with me. Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. Okay. Something in my spirit I want you to do. There's one word that keeps coming to me right now. And I know it's a word for me. And I'm going to speak it over my life. Because I'm, I'm believing I'm going to start walking in that. Okay. And I wasn't going to tell you. But I'm going to tell you, that word is authority. I believe that I am going to start walking in greater God authority. To take dominion over demon spirits, over sickness, over death and disease. And I'm, I'm just, I'm going to claim that today. Because I know in my spirit that that's what the Lord wants. Now, does somebody else, you have a word in your spirit. Maybe it's one word that you're just believing that God's going to do for you. Anybody else in this room, you have maybe a word. Chad, do you have a word, son? You believe God's going to do it for you? You know what? Anybody in this room that you've got a word that you believe God's going to do it for you, I want you just to lift your hands and I want you to speak that word over your life. If you say, Pastor, I haven't thought about it, but I want God to do it. Maybe it's favor. I don't know. Maybe it's wisdom. Maybe it's authority. I don't know what it is, but I want you to just right now open your mouth and I want you to claim that in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm going to walk in this. Lord, we're going to walk in it. Not for, Lord for what we get out of it, but Lord, for the kingdom. Hallelujah. For the, for the furtherance and the building of the kingdom of God to walk in that authority, Lord, that you give us. Hallelujah. God, we just claim that in the name of Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. It's very powerful what you speak. See, the enemy tries to get you to shut up because if he can get you to shut up, he can get you to shut down. I know we're going a little long today, but I just want to, I want to share a principle with you. Depressed people don't talk a lot because they start shutting down. That's what the enemy wants. So regardless of how you feel today, you speak up and you declare what you want over your life. You speak what you want. I'm not going to shut up and I'm not going to shut down. I declare God's authority speaking through me to edify the body of Christ, to do the will of God in the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, you're under no obligation to do anything, but if you want to do something, our ushers are going to come and you can sow, and this, this offering will go to bless Brother Buster. I know this because he's told me, he says, Wayne, I, I take offerings, and I go to places that really can't afford to bring me in, and I go on my dime because people like TPC are willing to bless me so that I can do that. So, Father, we just thank you for your word today. Thank you for your people. We thank you for the fivefold ministry. And, God, as we sow, Lord, into the kingdom of God, 
take it and multiply it bring it back to your people a hundredfold bless them as they go throughout their day and keep us in your care and bring us back at the appointed time and we give you all the thanks and praise honor and glory and everybody say amen now if you'd like to come and give they're going to sing and you can come and give and then you are gracefully dismissed may the lord bless you